how's everyone doing tonight? It's Valence, and I'm here with my first official big kind of build guide that I've been working on. Uh, I have tried build guides before in the past, except they weren't really that big or weren't really this detailed. And I put a lot of work and effort in to making a healthy build guide for you guys. Uh, I'm going to try to get more involved with that journalistic perspective of a few things as far as the build guide goes and everything like that. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started with today's build guide. It is for an engineer and it is a PVP spec. I'm assuming you can convert it into PVE. Uh, I plan on doing that with this build because it's focused on my two favorite weapons, which are the dual pistols, as well as an elixir build, so there's not a lot of micromanaging with turrets and everything like that. Anyway though, I wanted to go ahead and walk over my armor uh, sigils, as well as my weapon sigils, so the little runes and stuff I've put into my armor and weapons. And then I also wanted to go ahead and walk through my traits and the skill set that I have here. So we'll go ahead and get started with the skill set. So right. as far as the skill set goes, you in Guild Wars you have a smaller set of skills, right? Uh, you're going to be focusing on 10 skills with uh, different ones depending on your class up here for your shift. Uh, with Elemental, it's aspects for example or with different characters as different weapons etc 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 uh, so they all have different functionalities now with engi this engineering build what we're going to be focusing on is the dual pistols condition damage as well as keeping elixirs up as much as we can to keep those boons going to boost our character now as far as the straight up abilities go we are rolling dual pistols with dual pistols we have explosive shot this is a fiery shot that explodes in combat uh, impact, not combat, impact, uh, bleeding nearby foes for about 200 damage plus 185 blamage, um, damage bleed ticks. Uh, and you also get a combo finisher of physical projectile so it can produce combos. Now this is extremely nice to have and we'll talk about that as soon as I get into the elixir when it's partnered with a specific swiftness elixir. Next you have poison dart volley. It fires a volley of poison darts that poison your foes. Um, it's a flat 200 damage plus an additional 368 damage for each dart that connects with the target and it also gives a negative 33% heal effectiveness. It's hard to land these sometimes but as long as you kind of learn to work with it it's an extremely useful ability um, and that poison is a condition damage along with that bleed which is a condition damage and we're also going to get burning damage out of an ability we're about to talk um, about here in a second. You also get Static Shot, uh, discharges a lightning shot that blinds your target and confuses on each subsequent foe. So it does do around 200 damage flat out, and the original target it hits causes their next outgoing to attack to miss. It may not seem as useful as you think, but this is great for hitting multiple targets, especially with the piercing trait with your pistols, which we're going to talk about when we go into the traits menu. Uh, and the confusion is great, too, because it actually damages opponents that it bounces to whenever they use a skill. Uh, now, the blindness is fantastic if you're facing a melee class. Melee classes hate this ability. Uh, I played a couple of my friends in some tournament duels, and they got really ticked off. So it's really, really nice to have. It can bounce up to four targets hitting that initial one too. So it's extremely good ability, especially with melee. So I always save it when I'm surrounded by melee or maybe some range that can swap to some melee based abilities. Next you have Blowtorch, which shoots flames from your pistol to burn foes. Um, this is a ability that's damage based off of Looking distance. So you want to use it as close, as closely to your target as you possibly can. Now, why do you want to do this? The closer you are, the more stacks of burning it applies and the more damage those stacks do. So always use burning when you're, or excuse me, the blowtorch to apply burning whenever you're in close proximity. If you shoot it from far off, it'll be a ton of misses or one hit that'll barely cause any damage and it makes this useless because it's one of the longest cooldowns. So be sure to use blowtorch when you're straight up in melee range. Next you have Glue Shot, and this is my personal favorite CC ability I've messed with in Guild Wars 2 so far. Uh, first of all, it immobilizes foes uh, that get hit by it, right, so they're unable to move. And then it also cripples everyone that enters the puddle. Now, it only lasts for 5 seconds, but it's extremely nice on some of those choke points when you have melee trying to kick through. Again, you can immobilize, and it's a great CC ability that can be used every 24 seconds. So it's really nice to have that as well. Now, I did mention this was a boon-focused elixir build, so we are based on all elixirs here. For your healing ability, you're going to have Elixir H. Uh, heals yourself roughly 6,000. Provides regen, protection, or swiftness, one of the three random ones. Uh, so that's nice to have. You also have Elixir B, which is Fury, Might, Retaliation, and Swiftness whenever you drink it. Extremely nice to drink right when you get into a battle or you're capturing a node. And you can also throw this Elixir out. We'll talk about that when we go to our uh, other skills as far as you know your specials. Uh, but it's extremely nice to have this as well. And based on the build we're working with, trait-wise, you're actually able to keep all these elixir boons up almost consistently, uh, which is really nice because then you don't have to don't worry about micromanaging turrets and everything like that. So 
you want to make sure they're going to be keeping these up, and that's what this build's focused on. So you will have Elixir B to give you that permanent Fury, Might, Retaliation, and Swiftness bonus. Next, you have Elixir U, uh, which grants quickness and a random utility skill from another profession. So quickness, basically your actions and abilities and everything go twice as fast. This is great when paired with Explosive Shot and Poison Dart Volley, especially when entering a fight, because you will able to be able to stack about 5 to 6 bleeds from Explosive Shot plus a Poison Dart Volley by the time the quickness' 5 second duration has been lost. Now, quickness does give you a negative bonus each time you use it. Or, excuse me, the elixir does. Uh, you'll regenerate no endurance. You will take 50% more damage, which is the worst one. And the quickening zephyr one, you cannot be healed. Now, these are rough trade offs, but it's worth putting those extra stacks on. So, as long as you kind of are messing around with it enough and you don't use it if you're being focus fired on, it's out actually easy to like outlive other players. So, you know, just use it carefully uh, and it's very nice to have, especially with uh, that quickness. It helps when you're going into a fight. Uh, next, you have Elixir C. Now, I had debated using Elixir S, which shrinks your cells, recovers from stun, and allows you to evade attacks. However, that's only direct damage, and I've noticed a lot of people are going with condition-based builds. So, Elixir C converts all conditions into random boons for 5 seconds. Again, seems like it's more the way out, but you can trade those two out, so that's nice to have as well. Now, with Supply Crate, you it's just a huge supply drop, right? You drop a supply drop. Um, now, you do have the Mortar, which is stationary, so it's really not that useful unless you're attacking specific things in World v. World. So in World v. World, I may be using Mortar, but as far as regular PvP goes, I stick with the Supply Crate. Uh, same with Elixir X. I mean, Rampaging Brooder, Whirling Tornado, really not necessary. The Supply Drop will give you a couple turrets, including a healing turret, plus med packs, plus a few other random bonuses. So it's really good for capping points, which is every basic PvP game in Guild Wars 2. So always go with the Supply Crate. Now your Elixirs are able to be thrown out too. Um, Elixir H will randomly generate protection, vigor, or regen uh, whenever you toss it to allies. Elixir B actually does Might, Fury, Swiftness, and Retaliation, so it's the same effect that you get from drinking it, so you can double stack it if you throw it in the right position. Really nice to have that as well. Uh, Elixir U gives you a random spell. The ones I've encountered so far are a Stealth Line, which you walk through it and it grants Stealth to you for about 5 seconds. Um, you also have the Protection Aura, and it is a wall of protection that reflects enemies' projectiles. That is by far the most useful one. And then there's also a Smoke Wall that confuses enemies who walk through it. So, it provides some decent utility. The only thing I'm not a big fan of is how you don't know what it's going to give you. So, that can get pretty rough. But in the end, it's really nice to have it. And, you know, Elixir U is a necessity for you personally as a player. So, why not use some of those random abilities? Uh, Elixir C um, converts one condition into a random boon for allies. Again, not really fantastic, but it is an extremely decent thing to have, you know, if you ever need to throw it out or whatever. Um, but anyway, that's the basic for all the abilities in this build, and now we're actually going to go ahead and walk into the traits. Alright, so I have my hero panel up, and we went ahead and walked into traits. Now this is a 30 firearms, 30 alchemy, and 10 explosives build. I'm going to walk you through some of the basic abilities here, but they are pretty straightforward. So we are focusing on dual pistols, hence the firearms, and we are focusing on keeping up elixirs, hence the alchemy. The explosives are just kind of a, uh, hey, I should probably drop points in those over inventions or tools, but, you know, it's a pretty interesting little thing here. So let's go ahead and get started with explosives. You'll increase condition duration by 10%, and since this is condition-based build, that's not too hurtful to have over having the bonuses from inventions and tools so the condition duration helps a lot with this you also get power by 100 it's not going to boost anything too much but again nice to have it now here evasive powder keg is really nice you create a bomb when you dodge well when you're running away from melees or trying to get through a choke point and you can drop some of these bombs it's extremely nice to have them because they will provide additional burn bleeds and just flat out damage whenever you dodge so again just kind of a nice pickup now here you want to go with Incinerate Powder, which gives you a 33% chance to burn foes for 2 seconds on critical hits. Uh, when we go into the Firearms Tree, you'll see where this kind of stacks up as far as critical hits go, because we are a Precision and Condition Damage based build. Now, in Firearms, we do have, again, the Condition Damage increased by 300 because of the 30 points, and the Precision increased by 300, which gives us those extra criticals. Now you do have Sharpshooter. This is a 30% chance to cause bleeding for 3 seconds on critical hits. This does stack with Incinerary Powder, so whenever you get a critical hit, you're going to be doing burns and bleeds. 
Um, next, you have hair trigger, rifle, pistol, and harpoon gun skills recharge 20% faster. Since this build's focused on dual pistols, bam, it's extremely nice to have that because it's just faster regen for all your abilities. So you'll definitely want to pick up hair trigger. Next, I have target the weak. Now, this is an extremely nice ability, especially when stacked with incinerate powder and sharpshooter. 10% increased critical hit chance against foes with less than 50% health. So basically what this is saying is the further you burn down your enemies, the more critical hit chance you get on them, thus the more ability to apply burns and bleeds directly through traits as well as through abilities. So again, the more you hit an enemy and the lower the health they get, the harder it is to actually record them going through stuff. So it's a nice thing to have um, and kind of implied when you're going to the firearms tree anyway. Next we have rifled barrels. This is again a necessity. The pistol's basic range is not that fancy, and with rifled barrels it bumps it up to 1050, which is definitely a necessity for this build. You want to be able to hit people at further range without having to get too close. Uh, now in PvE, I don't know if that'll matter too much, but as far as this PvP build goes, you want the extra range. Next you have Target the Maimed, 5% increased damage against bleeding foes. Since you're going to be applying bleeds constantly, applying them constantly with explosive shot, your criticals and everything like that, that's an extra 5% damage bonus that's just amazing to have. Now here are Coated Bullets. This is my favorite trait ability I have encountered with any class I've played. Pistol Shots Pierce. Now it's three words, pretty straightforward, right? But as you'll see when I go into the gameplay footage from a uh, regular Battleground, all of my bullets, all of my abilities, including my burns from Blowtorch, my poison dart volleys, my static shots, my explosive shots, any ability I use to cause damage from my pistols will pierce through multiple targets. Now this is fantastic. Do they have to be in an even line? No, they have to be grouped around each other. So wherever my pistol goes, it's going to pierce through multiple targets. This allows me to apply conditions to everyone in an area of effect um, scenario. So it's great when holding points or doing choke points. You'd be surprised how much damage this will do, and you'll be able to see that when we talk about the actual game. So as far as alchemy goes, you're going to get that increased vitality by 300, which helps you survive, as well as the increased boon duration by 30%. Now, why alchemy? Because it's not a lot of micromanaging. You're going to be keeping Elixir B up, keeping Elixir H up to heal, and using Elixir C as much as you can to remove conditions whenever you have a stack on you. Now, Elixir U, again, it's that quickness, so it's kind of debatable when you want to use it. It's a situational thing. But... It's amazing to have these. First of all, you have Hidden Flask. So you get a bonus Elixir B when you drop below 75% health. Bam. Doubles those bonuses. Next, you have Fast Acting Elixirs. Elixir skills recharge 20% faster. Allows you to apply them quicker and more often. Transmute. 3% chance to convert incoming additions to boons. You have it. You can't choose something else. It's there. Does it work or make a noticeable difference? Not in my opinion, but hey. Next, you have potent elixirs, which increases elixir durations by 20%. Again, this is all part of keeping those boons up consistently on your character, which you'll be able to see when we go into the world, or excuse me, the PvP battleground. You also have energy conversion matrix, deal 1% extra damage for each boon on you. This is amazing. Since this build is focused on using elixirs to keep boons up, you'll see that I have consistent boons. At points, I'll be able to, based on my boons, have roughly an extra 10 possibly even 15% damage as soon as everything's bumped up. Fantastic. Lastly, automated response, become immune to conditions when health is below 25%. This is because I've been playing solo. Normally I might actually use, oh, where is it here? Where is it? I know it's here. There you go. So, Cleaning Formula 409 is a big debate that I had when I was thinking between these two. Throwing or consuming elixirs removes conditions from those affected. So you can use it, but since I'm not really playing with the team, I like to have the immunity to conditions when my health is below 25% to help me survive a little longer on the lower health and get out of a bad situation. So it's debatable. You can kind of use either one, but that's what I prefer to go with. Anyway, though, that's the trait skill set. If you have any ideas or options or any recommendations as far as changing it, please feel free to let me know. I'm actually interested to see how this video evolves into something that will be a decent engineering build discussion. Anyway, though, let's go ahead and jump to the last part and arguably one of the most important parts, uh, looking at my armor sets. Now, as far as my runes and my armor go and my weapon sigils go, 
you really want to focus on three specific ones. Uh, these are going to be the Rune of the Afflicted, the Rune of the Crate, and then the Rune of the Monk. Now, as far as weapon sigils go, it's pretty straightforward. I went ahead and I went with the Sigil of Superior Earth in both my pistols. Now, this gives a 60% 60 chance on critical to inflict bleeding for 5 seconds. Now, this helps you stack up those bleed ticks and keep those bleed ticks going. That's why it's kind of a necessity to have these, right? Now, the Sigil of Superior Earth recently got nerfed uh, since the launch of the game. However, I think it's still one of the best runes to pick since we're focusing on bleeds anyway, so it'll help keep our stacks up. Uh, now, as far as your amulet goes, I went ahead, I just did Rampager's amulet to get started. Uh, it's that extra precision for the extra critical bonus, a little bit of vitality, a little bit of power, and another uh, 569 flat condition damage. So that's kind of a given and implied. Now, as far as runes go, I did mention three ones. We have the Rune of the Afflicted, we have the Rune of the Crate, and the Rune of the Monk. Now, the Rune of the Afflicted and the Rune of the Crate will give you a plus 28 condition damage bonus and a plus 15% bleed duration. So, you're getting roughly 30% extra bleed duration, and with the stacks, roughly 150 extra condition damage. Now, this is extremely nice to have because we are a condition-focused build, and it's easy to spread it out. So you see here, the Rune of the Afflicted on two, and the Rune of the Crate. Now, people have asked how I do three with the Rune of the Crate to get that extra plus 55 condition damage. Simply put one in your Aqua Filter, so that you get that extra bonus with the Aqua Filter. It does stack and count when you're in PvP. Now, is, that's a little Aqua Filter trick that everyone's been asking me about. <laughs> now, to explain a little bit of the reason that why I have the Superior Rune of the Monk, the plus 25 healing really isn't the big one here. It's the plus 15% boon duration. That 15% boon duration is going to help up help us keep up our alchemical al Al I don't even know how to say it. The alchemy elixirs basically from our alchemy trait menu. So that gives you the plus 15% boon duration. Now this is a rune setup that I currently run with and it works out well for me. But if you guys have a different rune setup or any suggestions, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Anyway though, that's about it for the sigils and runes as well as my neck piece here in this build. So let's go ahead and actually hop into some specific PvP gameplay now from a couple games that I filmed. And I'll talk a little bit about what I do with the build and that way you can see it in action. Be right back. Alright folks, so as you can see this is a game in Battle of Kylo and this game just gives me a little bit of kind of a show-offy thing that I can do with this build. So you'll see that I have all my abilities and everything set and we are using the current trait setup. Now here I wanted to go ahead and head straight to Mansion to go ahead and cap a point since capping points is kind of essential in this PvP world. Uh, now the one thing that you're always going to have to worry about with this build is you aren't as strong as you'd like to be. Um, if people focus fire you down, you're normally going to lose. But I want to show off those scenarios with those piercing abilities. So you see there I try to throw an elixir, you know, just for kicks to see if I can kick it off there. And I'm actually going to flank around Clock Tower here and move in a bit and start dishing out some damage. Now, here at Windmill, you'll see my first combat scenario. What I want you to pay attention to is the bullets actually piercing. Now, these piercing bullets are phenomenal. Uh, they can do a ton of damage, and I went ahead and used Swiftness there, Elixir U. And I did get transmogrified or turned into a little sheep or whatever. So the Swiftness kind of dissipated right there. But I want you to pay attention to how closely and how quickly I put bleeds on this guy. So you see we're already at 4 bleeds, 5 bleeds, and they start ticking down. Those are from my criticals as well as my attack. Now I did throw a static shot there, and you'll notice that I did poison him, and I did confuse him as well. Now, he is a mesmer, and he decides to run away a bit, so I don't want to tangle with him when I move back here. That just gives you an idea of how quickly you're able to apply conditions. So I head up back to Windmill, and I just kind of hang out here for a minute. Um, with these two guys right here. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to play a lot of organized PvP, and I feel that this build could do a lot better in organized PvP, but, you know, we digress. So I see I have a group coming. I go ahead and drop my supply cache to get my net turret, my flame turret, my healing turret, and just, again, pay attention to how quickly I can apply conditions on all of these guys um, and keep those boons up on me personally, right, and my allies as I'm going around here. Now the key thing with melee is you need to stay away from them. If you get swarmed too quickly, you'll have a problem. And there's really nothing you can do about it. 
Now you can see here, there's a little bit of the piercing. I'm actually piercing through multiple targets as I'm running around kiting this guy uh, who's walking with me. And I did end up bringing down Putao, uh, but again, it's just a lot to handle, and eventually I get overwhelmed and start falling back. Now here, I should have started to fall back a little earlier, uh, but I just couldn't because of that immobilization. I end up getting taken down and wiped out. So if you're, you can probably handle two people if you can kite them around a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, if you get focus fired by a couple targets, you're going to go down. There's really not much you can do because this build is not based too much on defense. It's more based on offense and knocking up those condition damages. I just said knocking up in a video. That should totally be some bonus points. Clock tower huh. Armor anyway, I go ahead and I spawn back in. And I head up to mansion because I notice no one's defending it. Now, as far as these PvP battles go, it is a lot easier to play with organized uh, groups. So if you have even two or three friends, you're going to be able to do a lot of damage and hold points a lot better than an unorganized group. Now, to be fair, my team here was doing pretty decent. Um, I do believe we end up taking this game. And you see me come around here, and I'm actually going to help out uh, a couple of my allies finish these guys off. And I want you to notice, I just drank Elixir U. You saw how fast I put nine bleeds on this elementalist. Nine bleeds, and I kept doing it. That's what Elixir U allows you to do. You see there, I throw out a random effect from uh, Elixir C, or excuse me, the Elixir U effect, my bad, and got the protective barrier. And now I actually head up the clock tower because I noticed a couple guys are heading up here. So I go ahead and I burn him and put some bleeds on to get started and try to immobilize him. Me and Mesmers really don't get along very well, so that's why I'm not too big of a fan with them. Um, but, you know, it's just the Mesmers being Mesmers, cloning themselves and stuff. I'm sure it has its purposes. If I played one, I know I'd probably enjoy it. Um, and I actually come out here to help out some allies. I throw a static shock off to try to do some confusion, but eventually come back up to the point. The big thing with Guild Wars is choke points. You know, if you know how to manage your choke points and stuff, you'll be able to do a lot better. Now here I actually go around the clock tower, and I want you to pay close attention to this because I do jump down and I follow this guy here the Mesmer and I go ahead and try to finish him off but I the big thing that you want to take out of this build is bullet piercing now I will admit this is not my best game ever um, I, of course I've had better games but you know the second I try to film it it becomes a problem right and then that whole tedious thing comes uh, but this game does have its moments and some points that I was trying to prove when I'm not getting nuked down and focus fired on. Uh, but, you know, th th that's the one thing about filming PvP games when you try to do commentary is, yeah, you can film them, but eventually when you do film them, you just get bad, 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 uh, you know, and the, the games keep coming and getting pretty terrible, so it's all a tad bit of a headache, but, you know, we digress, we digress, we work with it. <laughs> anyway, so I did just get taken down by that thief. Again, if you cannot kite the melee out of your way, you have a problem. Now pay attention here, I use the swiftness, and watch how fast I bleed this guy up. Three, four, six, right, seven, five, I get the ticks and the confusion off on him, because I do notice he's a rogue, so I wanted to go ahead and confuse him so he'd start hurting himself if he hit me. Now you'll watch him, he comes up on me and he gets a lot of damage off there. Those poisons are going to be the ruin of you, and those are conditions, so make sure to keep your condition on Sanctuary. Now, here, I really didn't need to plot that supply point, but I did notice a few other people coming up to join him, and I do finally get him down, so I just figured the supply point was a good thing to pop. Don't worry about popping your supply point. It's not that big of an assistance, in all honesty. Uh, just pop it when there's a point you think is going to be attacked, because it's good to have, good to have up there. It not only heals you, but your allies as well and drop some of those med packs for quick your healing. So destroyed. don't be afraid to use your elite ability. That's one thing I learned. I always had it on reserve, and then whenever I tried to use it, because I used it so much, it was it was less effective, or didn't use it as much, rather. It was much less effective. So don't be afraid to use your ability. Now here I take a little detour. I grab the repair kit repair while I have kit. swiftness up use on me and trebuchet. bring it over to uh, our trebuchet. But another thing I hope you guys have been noticing throughout this video, I assumed it was implied because of the build, is how long my boons are staying up. Notice that these boons normally last anywhere between 20 and 25 seconds regularly, but you see mine are lasting Clock upwards of 50, 60 seconds sometimes, and I'm able to constantly keep them up. For example, the with the might boon, 
able to constantly keep it up at almost Your two stacks. Um, I could probably stack it higher if I was paying a little more attention. However, I thought I'd have a little bit of fun with the trebuchet. Um, now, because I use the trebuchet, I actually get uh, a lot of attention here, and I notice them, so I go ahead and hop off and jump down. We did have this necromancer here, so I go to help out my teammate, throw a static to confuse him, and go ahead and bump out. And I, I've tried to get a good glue shot off, but it just wasn't working. Um, you see there, that's the protective field again that reflects hits. Now, he is a guardian, so I don't want to go ahead and mess with that, right? So I noticed he brought along his friends, his ranger, and then his awesome mesmer and these three people were actually targeting me throughout the entire night so I went ahead and popped the swiftness just to burn this guy down a bit and notice how quickly I'm able to apply these conditions to him that's what this build is all about however again I get swarmed and there's really not too much I can do whenever you're swarmed just because elixir H is your only healing ability just run away and don't take the shame in it because it's a team effort game so always have a couple buddies with you since there's no dedicated healer classes you may be able to outlast some other classes, but in the end, it's really not going to make that big of a difference. So you always destroyed. just have to be careful with Guild Wars. Now here I'll go ahead and follow up and head back over to Windmill because I noticed some combats going on here. Now pay attention again to the piercing, right? The piercing is what matters. You'll notice whenever I hit a target, I'm able to pierce him so easily and do a ton of damage to him. Windmill so caps. a couple guys are coming over here and I go ahead and follow the windmill cap team put up again another protective field just watch how fast I'm able to burn this guy down with condition damages after you know he comes back up in my visible plane of view An enemy was the bleeds are what it's all about those bleeds if applied properly can do so much damage as long as you keep them up so I throw some elixirs out to my allies here and press up with them uh, it's always important with this build, try not to be the center of attention, because if you are the center of attention, you're going to have problems. So what I like to do is kind of move around and keep people on me and keep getting kills, but not be the center of attention. Just cap some points, help some people out, because if you become the center of attention, everyone's going to be slamming into you and doing a ton of damage. So you see there, that's that, and this gives you a little bit of a preview with the game. I will have some more PvP coming out soon where you'll be able to actually watch me in combat and stuff and see some better scenarios and some better overall games as soon as I start getting into the organized PvP world. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this build video. I was extremely excited to share this with you and wanted to take a lot of time and put into this. Uh, not only because I'm proud of this build, but also because I am entirely open to suggestions. Suggestions mean a lot to me, and it's something that I really value. And as far as suggestions go, if you have anything that may be interesting to you, or any changes you've made for the better of this build, or any tips for me personally, as long as it's not rude or obscene, you know, I really do appreciate tips. I'll be more than happy to incorporate them into future build videos. Anyway, guys, I hope some of you try this build. I'm going to call it the Blood Alchemist or something. I don't know, whatever I end up putting in the title at the end of this uh, creation process. And I hope you guys do enjoy the build. So have a good one, folks. Remember to subscribe to me for more build content, some more game stuff coming out. I do a wide variety of stuff, so not only Guild Wars. And I'll be more than happy to interact with you guys and have some good times in our community. So remember to like this video, comment on it, give it a thumbs up if you really enjoyed it. And please feel free to let me know about any changes you might make to the build or if you're enjoying the build yourself. Have a good one, Guild Wars guys, and I'll talk to you in the future. Valence out.